Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's exciting episode, we are gonna be putting the engine, Bad Wolf engine, back into the car. So, stay tuned for that. Now, as I said, on today's episode, we are gonna be finally putting my turbocharged Classic Mini engine back into the car. For right now, I am still waiting on a few additional manifold parts and turbo parts and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the engine back in the car. I can start mocking up some of the things inside the car while I wait for those additional pieces. The rest of the kit is all made to fit specifically in the Mini engine bay, so knock on wood or knock on Mini should be okay. Now, this has been something that I have been looking forward to getting into my car for quite some time. Um, and what better place to do it than my brand new garage? Now, I wanna show you guys a few things that are special about this engine before it goes back in and we don't have a good look at these items. And then I also wanna show you guys how I prepared my engine bay for a turbocharged setup, um, specifically the side mount style turbo. So, let's jump over to the engine first and I wanna show you a few things. Now, let's take a look at the front of the engine first. Um, you might notice a few different unusual things about this engine when in comparison to a standard A-series engine. First things first, right down here, this is a remote oil filter takeoff. So it removes the oil filter housing that sits normally down here, and it redirects that flow into a location that I want it to. I'm gonna have an in-depth video of the whole plumbing system I'm gonna do there, oil cooler, remote oil filter housing, all that stuff. That'll be in an upcoming episode, so stay tuned for that. The second thing you might notice is that there is an AN fitting in the place of a distributor. Now on the A-Series engine, you'd normally have a distributor gear that sits inside here with having your whole distributor fed down inside here. On my engine, I have an ECU that's going to be managing my ignition, so I no longer need that distributor drive gear or the distributor itself. And what you can do is simply block this off, but in my case, I'm also gonna be having a turbo that sits kind of over here-ish and needs a turbo oil drain. So what's gonna be happening is that turbo that sits off to the side here is gonna have a feed or a drain pipe, and that is going to run down and drain right into the sump, into the gearbox here, um, and get recycled into the engine. Very excited about that, that turned out pretty nice. Next up, we're gonna move around to the back side of the engine here, and what you're gonna see is a similar looking takeoff, but this is on the former mechanical fuel pump uh, mounting place. Now, what this is, is a baffled breather. Um, this is a great place to get breather gases or crankcase pressure and release it. And I have a pretty unusual breather system that I'm gonna be plumbing, but you can see here for right now, I have an AN hose that's run, tested to connect here, and then I have another AN hose over here, which is my other breather. This is likely gonna get plumbed up and covered because I have these two breathers back over here. Again, that will be in its own episode. I'm gonna show you guys all sorts of really cool stuff with that. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is something I am absolutely over the moon with. Now, one thing I'm super excited about is this new aluminum, aluminum, aluminum radiator. Now, the reason I'm so excited about this, you guys might be thinking, yeah, Cole, you could always get an aluminum radiator. On a Mark I Mini, you have a built-in radiator shroud on the body of the car. And as a result, if you are using the standard mounting hardware from the early cars, which is the two-piece shroud, um, you can only fit this thinner original radiator. And as a result, you are reducing your cooling capacity quite considerably on engines, in my case, where I need a lot of cooling. But I discovered something really, really cool. On the later cars, they actually got rid of the built-in radiator shroud that's on the body of the car. But additionally, this new radiator mounting bracket they used on later cars is skinnier. It's not as deep as the original one was, and as a result, you have more room to fit a larger radiator because it's pulled closer to the engine. So as a result, I will now be able to use a much larger aluminum radiator. I'll be able to get a considerable amount more cooling potential out of just the standard 
built-in radiator, um, and I can do away with this one. Um, I am so excited about this, and every measurement I've done says that this is going to fit. Hopefully when I'm lowering that engine in, I don't find out a nasty surprise and it doesn't, but I'm relatively confident in my math. So with all of that new information out of the way, let's get to it. Let's put this engine in the car. All right, so my engine is now back in place. It's where it's meant to be. And I'll tell you what, this radiator does technically fit, but it is tight. It is very, very tight. Um, so something to keep in mind, if you're gonna be trying to run a larger radiator like this on an earlier car, um, I am gonna loosen up these bolts here and see if I can kind of adjust it a little bit, but um, it does fit. It's just really, really tight, as I said. So now that this is back in its home, we're gonna start connecting up some of the stuff here. Um, I'm not gonna be able to connect up everything, obviously, because the turbo's not here and the rest of the bits are not here yet, but I can start mocking stuff up and start testing the breather system, um, some of the sensors, the clutch, all those different things can be reinstalled. Now what I'm doing here is plugging up my crank position sensor. Um, I am running the sensor wire down behind the back of the radiator and underneath it, near where the engine mount is. And then I'm gonna plug this in. I can actually reach that plug really easily from the front here. So I think it's gonna be a perfect place for it, but it's also gonna be up out of the way. Next up, we have this radiator here. Now, you can see this is literally touching the shroud on this side, or maybe you can't see that, but it's unimportant. It's literally touching it. So what I'm hoping is that I can loosen up these bolts here a little bit, and maybe loosen up these, push this radiator just in a smidge, just so it's not got so much stress on it, and then tighten these bolts back down. If that doesn't do it, I think that I do have enough play in the bottom of the radiator bracket and then these bolts where I could actually kind of notch in a little bit of space on these bolts or these ones here. We'll see. I think I can fit this in here. All right, so not a whole lot was required. You barely even saw it, but um, after loosening those up, this just kind of moved a smidge in that direction and it's got enough to where it's got a tiny little gap all the way around, which is what exactly what I want. And now that fits. Very happy with that. Now, how are these spark plug leads going to run? Well, the way the MED kit is set up is this coil pack's kind of meant to be mounted up here on the, on the bulkhead, it, actually in this exact position. Um, and these are supposed to kind of run over your radiator mounting equipment here and into the spark plug lead. So I'm fairly certain, let's just test this out here. That's, and those actually reach basically perfectly. So um, good job on that MED, those fit nicely. Um, hopefully, I'm going to have a front mount intercooler here. And so hopefully um, the tubing for the intake or, and, and all of that mess is going to fit and go on this side here over the, the radiator equipment. Um, we'll find out. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a tight fit. All right, so since we are still waiting on some hardware to arrive, I am gonna wrap up this episode with one last little task here. Now what you see in front of you here is the turbo that's gonna be used on my car. And the turbo has a few different ports in it. You have some coolant ports and some oil ports. Now, 
Um, the coolant, this is a water-cooled turbo. Which, so what that means is water is passed through this turbo, specifically on the hot side, to cool it down and to help keep the under hood temperatures a little bit more reasonable. And then you have an oil drain and an oil feed. Now I don't have my hose for the oil feed at the moment, but that is something that is gonna be coming in the future and we'll do a whole episode. My plan is to have a whole episode on how to plumb up your oil feed lines, um, running the whole oil system in my car um, and some kind of special stuff with the breather. Um, so stay tuned for those episodes. Those are definitely gonna be coming soon. Now, in order to set this up properly, what I'm gonna be doing is creating some AN fittings, or <laughs> I'm not creating them, but I'm gonna be some attaching some AN fittings here. Now, these are just gonna get plumbed into the heater circuit of my Mini. Um, the takeoff on the top of the head, uh, there'll be an AN line coming off of that, and then AN line into this, then there'll be one coming out, and that'll run to the standard heater outlet on my car. And now the reason that I am gonna be using that circuit is it's a nice close spot for me to take off these coolant lines, and it should be relatively short runs for the AN lines. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. And now with those tightened down, I did use like a sealant, a thread sealant on this. It needs to be high temp because this whole side here gets really dang hot. Um, and then of course we have our turbo oil drain. Now what you want for a turbo oil drain is basically the largest fitting that you can fit on here um, that's reasonable. I mean the hole that's coming out of there is only so big, but you don't want any restrictions on this oil um, this oil drain, because any restrictions on this is gonna cause problems for the uh, oiling and the lubrication of your turbo. Now the drain itself is just uses gravity to drain out that oil. There is a pressure feed on the top. It's got a much smaller hole that feeds the oil into the system um, to keep everything lubricated. But on this bottom end, you basically just wanna open it up and allow as much fluid and as much oil as you can to fall out of this and go back into the sump. In my case, you can see I've got a 10 AN fitting here. Um, this is gonna be nice and big to allow as much oil to drain out of this as quickly as it needs to. So I have some extra AN lines here and you're just gonna get a little idea of what this is gonna look like. We're gonna have AN line on top, AN line on the bottom. And now these are old AN lines. They actually, one of them is kind of leaky, didn't do very well, but you can see that is how that coolant run is gonna look on this turbo. And then of course we'll have a big 10 AN fitting coming off of this. Most likely it's gonna need to be not quite a full 90 degree. It'll be something sort of like this. And there we have it, our little spider monster with all the AN fittings and everything hanging off of it. So that's gonna be kind of what it looks like. This is gonna change a little bit as we get everything mounted in the car. Um, but yeah, that is, gonna, that is looking pretty nice. All right, and so with that, I'm gonna wrap up this episode. I know it was a relatively short one and I am sorry about that. Um, there is lots of stuff to do, but there's a lot of stuff that's still waiting on parts, specifically for the front mount intercooler kit and my whole um, exhaust manifold and everything. Can't do much else without those here, so I don't want to kind of keep um, making assumptions or anything on the spacing and sizing and placement of anything, because if I do, I'm ultimately gonna hurt myself and have to drill more holes and all sorts of stuff. So right now, we're gonna leave it as is. If you guys have any questions about this episode, installing the engine, this radiator over here, anything like that, feel free to post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. But hopefully on the next episode, we'll be installing our oiling system or we'll be installing our turbo or we'll be installing our breather system. So stay tuned for that. I think you guys are really gonna like those episodes. And uh, until I see you guys again, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on.